I am very, very happy uh, here because the message of the simple things that we can do for the bees is really a very simple message. And um, I'm very amazed. I want to thank Rodney and um, John McLean and Barry Foster and all the people who have put this conference together. I'm kind of flabbergasted by it. It's wonderful, the people who are going to be speaking and the support that Trees for Bees has. It's very broad support. Now, I'm in this first talk, I'm giving two today. The first one is about the big picture. They wanted, I've been asked to talk about pollination and there's been a couple of questions already by people who are asking, you know, what about the bees? What about um, the weeds, etc.? My work covers all of that. So I hope I'll be able to answer some of your questions. If I don't, I can later, okay? But over the two talks, I'll be able to answer most of the, what has been asked. Um, right now, what I want to do is just overview what, what kind of pollinators have we got in New Zealand? You hear stories, the most important thing is you hear stories that, um, you know, oh, you need the native bees, you've got to get the diversity, et cetera. Does that apply to New Zealand? New Zealand is quite different, and I'm going to show you some of those differences. But I also want to tell you the story that um, John Hartnell thought that, you know, we, when we did the first bee plant guide, that's, that's a very um, good bee plant guide that, that we did. But I want to tell you what happened to me. I was working with the bee industry group, and I quickly, one month, boy, this contract, this is okay, let's get this together. And I interviewed 14 beekeepers, and I did all the literature, and I got the database out, and I presented my bee plant list, and I said, here it is, guys. And these are my guys, these guys are this VIG uh, group. And they said, knocked it all out, there weren't trees, there weren't shrubs, it's impractical, can't grow that farm, that's not available, this is wrong with that, and that's, and I'd like, you know, you guys took out 80% of my species. And so like I was like deadline, I said, John, I think we need a, an extension here. I'm not gonna be able to do this. So we went three more months and I went around to all the nurseries and a lot of farmers and said, okay, can you plant this? Can you plant that? And all through my work, I really need your help, you who are farmers or you know, know that kind of information. I don't know that if something's gonna grow where you've got it. I don't know if it's gonna be good maintenance or whatever. But I do know the science of is it gonna be good nutrition for the bees. But first we'll look at, let me get myself organized here. Um, we're going to look at the big picture. Um, I'm the co-chair of the Oceania Pollinator Initiative, and our goal is to save the pollinators in the world, stop the global decline of pollinators. So we're just one of five. Asia's now started one, so we're six. And um, our fruits and vegetables, as Barry and John have said, you know, without that diversity, you're just going to be eating wheat and corn. And important, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so it's very, very crucial. And what New Zealand has, this is, this is what I want you to think about is what I'm going to show you with these pollinators, is that going to help us in agriculture or is that like what's going to help us in our native systems? And our Trees for Bees is focused first on agriculture because that's our urgent problem. The, we also focus on, but I won't be discussing today, the native systems, okay? We have six functional groups. The big vertebrates, let's see if I can do this. The big vertebrates, birds, bats, lizards, social bees, bumblebees, honeybees. Native bees, they're all solitary. Flies, butterflies, and um, beetles. Is there any way to turn these lights out? Because it's going to influence my pictures. I would like to see you on the videos. Oh, uh, is that right? Oh, well, too bad. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I'm going to present them to you in order of importance for agriculture. Our most important, as we've already heard, is you, there is no other bee in the world that is of the industrial scale as the honeybee, mainly because you can, put to, you can build up to 50, 60, 75,000 bees in a hive, and you can move that hive around on demand in and out of crops. You can't do that. Bumblebees only have 40, 400, 500 in a hive, and it's much more difficult to move them around. So um, the managed and feral honeybees, since 1839, they've been here. And since 2000, the feral honeybees, the wild ones, the ones that escaped during the wild, they've been being, they're, they're gone, pretty much. 
Bumblebees, we've got four species. They were introduced in the 1850s, primarily because they needed them for the red clover, which had a long floral tube and they needed a long tongued bee. So they brought in four and, and they're around, they're doing well, and, uh, and they're also used in agriculture and you can manage them. But they're not the numbers. Remember, it's 400, 500 per hive and you can't transport, you can't manage them like, you, like the way you can a honeybee hive. Our native bees, most people don't even know they're there or they think they're flies. And Lyoproctus is one of our gen the biggest genus that we have, 21 endemic species in New Zealand. All native bees are solitary. That means they do not have a hive. They don't have a nest. They just have a solitary nest where one female goes into the ground or into a twig and creates little pollen pellets and lays eggs. And then next year, those babies come out. They never see their mom or dad. And that's it. So they're just one female and maybe four or five little, little larvae. So solitary, uh, that's all our bees. And that's the same in Hawaii and a lot of the Oceanic Islands are all solitary. Coletidae is a Hylaeus uh, is the name of it. There's three endemic and two inventive. Now this one's really cute because it has, it carries the pollen not on its legs like the other bees, it carries the pollen in a crop, it eats the pollen. And it has, it's not a very hairy bee, so it's not a very good pollinator because it just, it just doesn't transfer a lot of pollen. But you'll see it most of the time on flax. Lazioglossum is a really tiny bee, um, and it's, it's much, much smaller than the, than the Lyoproctus that I showed you. There's three endemic and one native species. They're very generalist. You see them in crops. They carry some pollen, but they don't carry a lot of pollen. Only that Lyoproctus, that first one I showed you, is capable of carrying and transferring this similar amount of pollen that a honeybee can. And they're about the same size, some of those species. Okay, flies, there's this drone fly. It's fantastic, it's pretty hairy. It's in a lot of crops and it carries good, good pollen loads. But it's a fly and flies don't have nests either. And they just lay an egg and run away. And so, and it's just a completely different system. But some of them, if you can, I don't know if you can see this well enough, but there's lots of pollen on there. See, on the, on the, right around there, that's a Bibionid fly. So there's about 72 families of flies, 2,000 species, and they're, they're good pollinators. This one, however, a hoverfly, there's lots of hoverflies, and they um, eat pollen. So they don't transfer a lot of pollen, a couple of grains. Then you've got your butterflies and your moss. There's 13 native butterflies, 17 exotic, and about 1,800 8, 1, species of moss, but they're not great, great pollinators. You can see that what you need is a, like a bee is a little ball of fuzz and it carries lots of pollen. There's electrostatic forces that make the pollen stick to them. But the, the moss, it'll carry some, but it's not known to be a great pollinator for crops at all. Beetles, well, they just don't fly very far. And beetles are a pollinator in New Zealand. Now we go to the vertebrates. Birds are the most important, and if you're considering native systems, birds were huge, important pollinators, and we all know that we've lost most of our birds. So that's a big gap in the pollination systems of New Zealand with the birds gone. That's the tui, this is the stitch bird, and this is the bellbird in five finger. And what's really interesting with our perching birds, these are nectar-loving birds. They have long tongues. Do you see the tongue there? I'm going to show you another picture of the tongue. And they have, they perch and they do acrobatics. They're quite amazing. There's their tongue. And they lap up the nectar with that fur on the end of their tongue. So the perching birds, those are really important. Bats were really important also. They're a big vertebrate too. But as you know, we've lost our bats and there's only one short-tailed bat. And, and most, if you want to look at bat pollination, you have to go to Barrier, Great Barrier Island. There's, it's just, there's some on the mainland, but we know bats have declined. So we, and then also, this is unusual. You won't see this in most pollination books, but lizards are an, a pollinator. And we, do, we did have one student did a master's thesis to prove that lizards do deposit pollen. So these are the... Uh, the order of importance, the abundance, the flies, the honeybees, the native bees, the beetles, and the bumblebees are, the, are how abundant they are. And as I said, they're declined. Where the birds are gone, the feral honeybees could 
substitute in there. So there's on five finger the honeybee substituting in for a, a bird. But it depends on the declines and the absences at the community level. You've got to look at pollination at a whole community level. And with the manuka industry putting in, in some places on the North Island, I've heard really lots and lots of hives. We need to be careful about overstocking and driving our native insects into extinction. The honeybee is also in decline because of the varroa. And so in agriculture, we need to support the honeybee. And the honeybee has a role in the native Edom's ecosystem because it has replaced the birds somewhat. I mean, the, you know, I'm, you know, I'm oversimplifying it. But for our economy, we can't survive without the honeybee. That is the most important problem we have in New Zealand right now. And um, the honeybee, can we use our native bees? And this is what you hear from Europe and the United States. That's what they're doing. They're, they're encouraging the native bees. But our native bees are these little tiny bees that are solitary. So you're, how are you going to manage them? If a farmer says to you, uh, bring me, uh, I need about a million bees next week for a couple of weeks. <laughs> you, well, these things, they're nesting in the ground. What do you, how are you going to get a million of those together? You can't. So the lyopractice, and as I said, Haleas is a little bit hopeless as a pollinator. I mean, it just... I mean, I think it, do, it does do pollination, but it, it's kind of, it, it's certainly not a candidate. And uh, so there's the pictures of the, we've got a bee poster out there of these. There's the Hylaeus, that's the mask bee, and there's what the um, Lyoproctus looks like. That Lyoproctus, that can help. So we do need to conserve it, and it will help in agriculture. But can you manage it the way you can a honeybee? No, you cannot rely on it. So I'm just going to skip that because I ran out of time and just say that all the things that I see that need to be done, I look, when looking at the pollinator decline issue, the most important thing that we can do is to support the honeybee. And the easiest thing for someone like me to do, because I'm a botanist, is to make sure that um, we give, it, give the honey, make sure the honeybee gets some good food. And so we started the regional bee plant guides, and for this, I'm talking about early work today. This is before I got the Sustainable Farming Fund. And um, you can get the bee plant guides and the bee posters out at our stand in the corner there. So, oh, okay. Uh -huh. Excuse me, I was just curious to know, are there any, um, the, the, the risk of, of a similar um, a problem like Varroa, is, is there something like that out there for, for bumblebees? Is, is New Zealand at risk of no, no, the, the varroa does not affect the bumblebee, and there's no known terrible disease for the bumblebee in New Zealand. It's, it, 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 there's problems with bumblebee populations declining in United, North America and in Europe. But in New Zealand, there are four introduced species, and s some of them are very rare, but some of them are, one at least of them is, are doing quite well, especially since the feral bees are no longer out in the native because the bumblebees are also feral as well. They've all escaped. That's it.